All right, here we are. So, hey, uh, my name is JD. I'm an animator at Industrial Light and Magic. Uh, I just finished working on Star Wars The Force Awakens, which will open this week. So uh, I hope uh, you go watch it uh, and tell your friends. And uh, I am here <clears throat> to look at your uh, submission. And uh, let's get right to it. We got a couple notes here, some uh, you know pros and cons, giving you a bit of a uh, hopefully an all-rounded feedback thing. But first of all, I gotta say it's really really cool. And uh, for those that haven't seen it, let's just go here and play it. I won't fail you. I'm not afraid. Yeah. You will be. You. Will be. Super cool. I love it. I'm going to turn on the sound a little bit. So the thing is, all right. So first of all, I love the first shot. It's really, really cool. Like as a whole, I really like your the color choices, the composition, um, the character choices. I like that you have this little bird, and then the tiger comes in here and comes out of the shadows. Super cool. Very threatening. It's a cool take on a very known piece, and I like the. I just like that the character choices are not, you know, anything Star Wars at all. It's it's just you made it your own thing. Uh, you know, the contrast of the colors and position of the characters. I got some notes about that, but as a whole, I have to say, very, very, very cool, um, and especially on the first shot. So if you look at put the sound back in, I really, really like the head accents. I'm a really, really big fan of head accents and. Um, you know, little head turns and just movements where the audio feels connected to the creature or the, you know, whatever whatever um, character is saying anything. Uh, it's just, like, a lot of times you have, uh, you know, any type of, of movement of the character and then there's just the audio that's copy-pasted on top of it and kind of the lips are moving and that's it. But in your case, um, I'll just watch this again. Uh, I just really like what you did with this. Let's go back here. Very cool. I love your breathing. I won't fail you. See that? That little bit here, you anticipate the whole thing? I'm not afraid. Very cool. I won't fail you. So good. I really, really like it. This just blew me away. It's so cool. Now, <clears throat> getting into this, what I also like is that I won't fail you, right? So when he goes I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Like it's it's almost like a challenge. And the cool thing about that is that your character is actually taking a step forward, and that's a really, really cool thing. Because a lot of times, characters that kind of tend to just kind of stay here, you know, with their IK legs and whatever, they're afraid to move. And now in 2D, you have a lot more freedom um, to move around. Obviously, you got to redraw, and it's it's a lot of work either way. But I like that acting-wise, you're taking that step forward. It's a challenge. It's not just you're staying there, but no, you're taking a step forward. I'm challenging you, um, <clears throat> you know, with whatever he's, he's going to do. The thing that I would do with that is that you could, to me, you could stay like this, right? And you could have the character just ever so slightly more lean forward. Like right now it's like this. And I will bring him a bit more forward so that he is, you know, ever so slightly more hunched. It's it's just not as powerful. He's kind of like in a weak state at the beginning, right? And then, then you go forward, right? So you're kind of hunched, breathes in, he strains himself out and then takes a step, and then you have that powerful pose where, like, oh, I'm not going to move here, you know, I'm here to stay, um, I'm challenging you, so that you have a bit more of a contrast, because right now, if you go from here to here, like, you're starting here ever so slightly, but then you go straight back, and then you're staying in all this section here, always like that, and I would, to me at least, personally, I would wait until the breathing here, so right before that, you're still in that lean forward pose, and then you get into this, like, oh, I'm getting ready, and now I'm taking this line, and I'm taking that step on top of that. So that's probably something in terms of body posture that I would um, <clears throat> kind of tweak a bit. And something just for detail, which would be neat, is when you take a step right there that on that lean, right? He's leaning forward through here, which is neat. And I know it's a, it's a pain in the butt potentially to draw and all that stuff, but I would bring the toes in, right? You, you, on the top view, your toes will be together. And then when he leans forward, when he does this, that's when you bring the toes out <clears throat> so that you can sense that the lean forward, there's pressure on this leg, it pushes the feet down, which in turn push out and spread the toes. And the same thing uh, on this guy right there, right? You're 
pushing at this point, it's this leg that takes out all the weight because this is in the air, and then you go forward. So at this point, uh, let's take this off here. <clears throat> when you take that step right here, right there, I would uh, spread the toes, and then on, boom, on this, and lean forward, spread the toes here. And there's something about his eyes. There's something vulnerable here, you know, like a like very sweet look here, but immediately, boom, goes into, I won't fail you. And the thing what I would do personally is I would stay in this, right? Stay in this um, more in a nicer, not sad, but, you know, not as, uh, not as a strong look like here. So I would stay in this with an ever so slightly bigger eye here. So you have a bit smaller here, a bit bigger here. Not like the crazy one eyebrow thing, but just a bit bigger. So you have visually kind of a triangle. It opens up this way because he is looking this way. And then what I would do is you play. I won't fail you. I right there. So I won't fail you. Because in his voice, he's still not, he's not that strong in the voice. So you stay within this, the nicer looking eyes. I won't fail you. And then through this part, it's the thought process. And you can, right before he goes into this, that's when I would start squinting. Because he said that thing, he's thinking about it, and now it's the gear change. Now he's thinking about it. Thinking, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take on this challenge. I'm not a there you go. And you do this really nice thing here. Right there. See that? See how your lower lids and the cheeks go up? That to me is the moment where you actually go from, you know, from your eyes being like that. Right? Hoppa. And then as you do that squint, that's you go into this pose. I'm not afraid. That's it though. Super, super cool. Again, these are just, you know, subjective uh, remarks and potential something you might explore. But it's really, really cool. I really, really love uh, the first shot. For this one, I think it's cool. My my first impression was that it's all a very centered, um, which yes, it makes this very important. It's very, you know, very dramatic, and it's in the centerpiece. But there's something about it where I would potentially bring the bird just a bit slightly off center to the right, and the tiger slightly off center to the left, and then on this turn, right, you make that step into where you are here. So I know this is a lot of work to fix, but to me, compositionally. I would keep him just a bit to the left, this guy a bit to, uh, the tiger to the left, the, the bird to the right. And then when you do all this here, even here, they will end up being ever so slight to the right with the tiger ever so slight to the left to give, um, give give a bit of a left to right look that you established here. Here starting, you know, right to left. Again, I'm not saying this is wrong. It's just something that's so centered. And something I'm getting into uh, later on is that his eye line, like the head, sorry, my drawings are slightly off here. The head is always so horizontal that it makes this just, uh, just weird lines and I wish he was just ever so slightly to the left and I'll get to that later on but as a spoiler, a bit slightly more tilted over with the head to give that kind of a lean over almost like a triangle, you know, towards that target. But anyway, let's just, just quickly, it's not a big note, I would, you know, do little things, um, there's some other points that I would probably address first but that's probably the first thing that kind of struck me. The second thing was how this tail swoops in and to me it's it's ever so slightly distracting like there's there's just a such a big piece of foreground thing moving and the thing is okay well if you do this right if you telegraph to the audience hey i'm moving this tail around is important and it's, you know it's i like the idea that now the bird is surrounded by the whole thing you can't even get out but the thing is, is if that's the setup to me there is no clear um there's no clear payoff to it right so if you do this with the tail, there are a couple of things I would do. You will be. You will be, right? So he does this. Then when he goes forward, and you can even anticipate a little bit through here, I would tighten the tail ever so slightly, right? So he makes the space even smaller. So he gets bigger here, and around him it gets a bit smaller. So it's even more um, impressive as a view and, and, and uh, what's the word? You know, it's just more threatening for the bird. <clears throat> also something here. As you continue, see there's some really nice life in the tail. Let's pretend you do even through like the beginning here as it moves. Here, you got a nice keep life here. But if you don't do the tightening, even even then on something through this, I would make sure that if you because you move the whole character, right? So if the pelvis is moving and the back is moving, that you have a little bit of keep alive, something moving and changing in that pose of the tail. And again, I know it's a, it's a pain to draw, but that's just something in terms of detail. But to me, everything's really cool, really moving. 
and that's just kind of a cutout, and then that's kind of it. And I know this is part of the style where you just kind of leave things there, but it's just it's such a big tail move. Like I said, it's such a setup that I would love a bit um, a bit more more payoff. Um, also, what you could do is I'll be careful. A couple of things here. When you take your step through here and you lean forward, see there's a lot of weight on this, and you see that that part moving. It really need to uh, spread out those toes a bit. That's what indicates pushing. There's force on it and kind of just spreads them out, just so there's a bit more more weight associated with that. The other thing is there's a really neat change of the shoulder here, the scapula, right as you push off. But then the thing is, as you let go, you still have it. And I think I would drive that home where I would actually lower that a lot more so that when you go boom and you go on this section here, right, because so this is moving now all the way this back on this, then you can bring it back up here. This is, so a bit more uh, shoulder play could be neat. And then as you put the foot here, this is super detailed, super picky. You know, just being picky because it's, it's looking so good. Like as he goes from this weight, boom, onto this, and now the weight is more evenly distributed. You can bring down the shoulder, and I will bring up that that chest over this way, and you can just in indicate this by a couple the movement of the line, so that the shoulder is being uh, moved this way because this leg is now pushing the whole thing up. So just in terms of body mechanics, um, there's just something you can kind of push here. The other thing I would do, like I love this here, like I you get into this and it has this slight, um, you know, tilt this way down, and then what I would do is, like I said before, you go boom into this, like that's cool. But then when he's done, I don't know, there's something where I would just end it with a slight tilt to the side so it's not so straight. It's a slightly more threatening pose, a bit more dynamic line to have the whole thing slightly tilted down this way. And then speaking of threatening, if you look at his eyes, right, let's go back. Not afraid. <clears throat> so good. You will be. You will be, right? So then... You. So when he goes, you will be, like that last B, what's kind of stuck here, A, is the mouth, just quickly before the eyes. The mouth is kind of stuck in that one pose, and I will go B, and really widen, like you take the corners of the mouth and widen them, and then at the end, just as a slight relax, when you go back, you can go back into this. So those corners will go out, you know, maybe just a bit more, and then relax a bit, so it will B, so you have the B that comes in. Uh, and you can you can see in the mouth shift, it goes B. But then after, yeah, after that you don't stay in that pose. You can go B, and then you just relax the corners just a little bit. And the other thing to emphasize the B and the threatening nature is that right at the end B, you can do an ever so slight widening of the eyelids. Just the upper eyelids go out a bit. Uh, I mean out, I mean like up, but just a bit, and then come back down. It's like and not to cross franchises here, but if you've seen. Uh, Wrath of Khan, for instance, there's this really great moment when Khan um, shows himself for the first time and Chekhov sees him and goes, Khan! And it's not like this big thing where the uh, the actor goes, yeah, I am Khan, and moves around and does whatever. It just kind of stares, and he just opens his eyes and flares his eyes a bit. It's just like this weird, subtle thing, and it's so cool. And that could be a, a cool moment, because all through here, again, it's just the, the eyes don't change, uh, the the mouth gets stuck in the pose, and the and the head is horizontal. So to me, the combination of give this a bit more life, widen the the mouth on B and relax. You widen his eyes, just a flare, just a quick flare, and come back. And an overall tilt down, right, tilting down this way. I think um, could be really neat. Um, and I think that's kind of it on the on the tiger i mean it's really i'm being super picky you know it's, it's usually you know you're done with this and you're you're happy with it and you're, it's a pain to go back in there but these are just kind of my uh my thoughts on that and the only thing on the bird i would say you know it's upright <clears throat> this is hero pose and he challenged the uh, his, his, his enemy here whoever he sees here <clears throat> the thing i would do is if you're doing this and again i'm going back to the tail if you're making such a big deal out of this it would be neat during uh, a moment of pause during the audio where the bird, see how the bird goes back? I would have him go back, lower the shoulders a bit, because it's kind of like, uh-oh, something's going on. But at the same time, take a look and with the beacon, take a look to the left. Like, the, the bird can acknowledge that, oh, no, there's a tail around me, I'm in trouble. You don't have to be crazy. You don't have to be like a crazy head turn, like, oh, and there's a big take. But something subtle where... Instead of just staying in this and just taking a step back, 
you will take a step back, take a bit of look to the left, so we can see, oh, well, yeah, that's that's the connection he just made. Lower the shoulders a bit because he's, he's slightly deflated and not so, you know, not so uh, secure in his uh, challenge anymore. And then stay with that. That's kind of it, right? So let's watch this again. I won't fail you. So cool, again, head turns are great. Like just that little head accent, sorry, I have to, I have to just interrupt this again. This is so cool. I like the little details because it's not just always the same thing. It has a nice variety. And also on this here, I like the tightening of your wing. Right? It has to inhale, but it's also, mm, like, you know, it's almost like the chest out, tightening of the wings with the step. It's really cool. There's really so much cool detail in this shot. Big fan. This too, I like how with the voice. And the cool thing is that you don't see the character immediately. Like It's nicely played where you just see this. And then with the, it's just that. It's just so cool. This is a really cool idea. You will be. And that's the thing, you know, that when he goes, that's the only thing that I'm, that's bumping me is the tail. Such a big deal here. Then you will be, pause, and this could be the moment of, oh, uh-oh, looks over to the right, because he's not telling anything, right? So you're, as an audience member, you're being directed to look, look here, and then back to here, back to here. Um, so I think, I don't think it would be very confusing to the audience, but again, it could be, with that tail, like the tail is moving, the eye goes here, finishes here, the bird looks here, so now the audience looks here, and when that is done, he keeps talking, so we're already close up, but we go back up to uh, the tiger's head. So I think in terms of guiding the audience, I think this could work. It wouldn't be competing. And then that, you know, just with the pushing, I really feel like there needs to be a little bit of a spread, and little things that I talked about uh in the head. Now, again, it would be cool to kind of, it's almost like a snake, you know, tightening its grip, so you want to bring that tail in ever so slightly, ever so slightly, not too much, right? You want to be a big move, but you do want to stay here. You don't want to distract the audience from what's going on here, but as a subtle thing, you could bring it in uh, just a tad. Yeah, I think that is it. I think those are the notes that I have. Um, you know, some general, general notes, some stuff you can agree, disagree. Uh, and some super picky stuff because it is so awesome. So uh, I say congratulations again. Very, very cool. May the first be with you. <laughs> go watch Star Wars. And if you're not a fan, go tell your friends that are fans. Go watch it. Uh, and I hope you have fun if you do go watch it. And uh, that is it. So thank you for listening to the review. And uh, best of luck.